Hey, good day to you. This is Todd. I am a regular dude walking in the Word. Hey, thanks for joining us as we are continuing our journey through Ephesians. We are on, um, this is episode 25 today. Uh, we talked about yesterday, living a life worthy of your calling. Um, there's several things, there's actually about five things that we're going to be talking about. The, the, those are things to live your life worthy of the calling, okay? And it's all a part of sanctification. I should actually explain sanctification in one of these later episodes. Um, uh, but for now, if, if you have questions about sanctification is, you can uh, email me or in the comments below on YouTube, you can uh, ask that question. Um, but there's five things that are part of sanctification is what the term is called, and that is the way we should be living our lives as Christians, okay? It's just a characteristic of a, a true Christian. Okay, and the first thing today is a life characterized by humility. And that's taken from Ephesians 4, 2. I'm going to actually read Ephesians 4, 1 uh, also, just so you get a, um, we have the, a better understanding of this. We're going to spend um, like the next five episodes talking about those characteristics, which are actually taken from verses 2, and three of chapter four. Remember now we're it, we're in the pra more practical section of Ephesians. We've talked about the doctrine in the first three chapters. Now we're into the more practical section. So, if you have your Bibles, turn in your Bibles to um, Ephesians chapter four, verses one and two. As a prisoner for the Lord, then I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. Okay, we talked about that yesterday. Be completely humble. That's what we're talking about today and gentle, which we talk about tomorrow, and then patient, bearing on a, with one another in love. And then verse 3 says, make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. Okay, so those are all the things that are part of sanctification. So I want to talk about humility today. Humility is a term that um, in, the, in, the, in that time period, uh, in the Greek language, um, in, in, in that Greek era, um, humility was like looked upon as um, weak, and uh, God was not talking about it being weak at all. Um, but it was a characteristic of the Christian life, and really, it's it's taken the focus off me and pointing it towards God. Okay, being humble. Um, it is not a sign of weakness, and but to to the Greeks, um, it was. So even in the translations of the language, uh, they didn't really have a good term. For the way humility is is described according to the bible so um I, I have several verses here that actually talk about humility in the new testament so if you were going to look at what let me see here romans 12 3 says for by grace get for by the grace given to me i say to every one of you do not think of yourselves more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourselves with sober judgment in accordance with the faith God has distributed to each one of you. Okay, so we're not to think of ourselves more highly than than we ought. Kind of, kind of the opposite of of humility is pride. And I, I was listening to John MacArthur and talk about this, and he was talking about how, you know, we are supposed to be humble as Christians. Where if you're if you're filled with flesh and and sin you uh, are looking at pride okay and then we justify our sin by putting pride next to it and making it like um this is a great thing okay and he pointed out like we uh, uh talk about uh gay pride okay taking a sin and being prideful about it okay which is not what god wanted at all he wants us to be humility and have humility in following God. Okay, the next one is um, Romans fifteen seven. It says, "Therefore I glory in Christ Jesus in service to my God, to service of God." Okay, I am not glor glorying in myself. I'm glorying to God. Okay, then in First Corinthians, um, it says, "What after all is Apollos, and what is Paul? Only servants through which whom." You came to believe. As the Lord has assigned to each his task, I planted the seed, Apollos watered it, but God has been making it grow. So the, neither the one who plants nor the one who waters is anything. Okay? They're, they're saying oh, we're nothing really. But only God who makes things grow. Okay? And that's 1 Corinthians 3, 5 through 7. Okay? So um, 
again, it's taking the focus off me and, and like, oh, look how great I am, but uh, putting the focus on God. All right. And then um, uh, that's, uh, the, well, here, here's another one. Uh, Corinthians 3, 5. Not that we are competent in ourselves to claim anything for ourselves, but the competence comes from God. Okay. Again, pointing to God. And then Philippians. Uh, Philippians uh, 4 11 through 13 it says I'm not saying this because I'm in need for I have learned to be content with whatever circumstances I know what it is to be in need and I know what it is to be have plenty I've learned the secret of being content in every and all situations whether f well fed or hungry whether living in plenty or want I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength okay and again, not saying, uh, not saying I can do anything I want to because uh, I'm just so great. No, he says I can do all things because of Christ who gives me strength. Okay. So I wanted to bring that out today. <clears throat> this is the first of those characteristics that should characteristic be a character of our life if we're following um, a God. It's just a, if you're a Christian, you should have this characteristic in your life. All right. Thank you for watching. I'm just a regular dude walking in the Word, and I look forward to seeing you tomorrow as we continue our journey through Ephesians. Lord's blessing. I'll see you then.